you have no board games anymore. It's gone, all gone. You have to start a new collection. And you have only 100 euros to do that. In this video, we will create two board game collections, starting board game collections. So yes, if you don't have any board games at home, here are two collections you can start with. And why two? Because I have no financial limitations. I can buy whatever I want. Yeah, and I have only 100 euros to make mine. You can't even start it with Wonderland's War. And we also have different categories that we need to fit. We'll have to have a solo game, have to have a two-player game, thematic game, co-op game. It has to have game that's playable with a lot of people. Okay, but what if I like re re like resource management? That as well. We need some resource management, some Euro-ish stuff. Something that you can teach real quick. So 5.30 we called it. Yeah, that's 5 like... minutes to teach, 30 minutes to play. You don't have the money limitations, I have 100 euros. And we both have to hit all of these prerequisites with 5 games. And let's see which one builds the best collection with their limitations or no limitations. I'm gonna start with something totally fresh, totally new. I'm 100% sure nobody of you knows about. It is a game called Karakum. If I had to describe it in one sentence, this is Ticket to Ride card game. Whoa, 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 whoa. Not exactly like that. But the basic feel of it is, in your turn, you can either collect resources or buy a camel for your caravan. And then there's other different ways how you score points for those. There are some special abilities for caravans. And it plays like in 20 minutes. Easy to teach, easy to grab with you. So this is the travel one, right? Is it 5.30? It is 5.30. It also qualifies for two players. And resources? Yeah, well, <laughs> I did say that you collect resources, right? How much more of a description do you need? I'll start with an obvious one. Clever series, this is the first one, I think my favorite one. In this game, you just basically roll a bunch of dice, use those numbers to fill out a sheet. Uh, different colored dice go into different places and make different combos. And you want to get these chain effects when you fill a few places, you get to fill other places and so on and on. It's really good solo, two player pocket size. Not that pocket size, it's a bigger pocket, but it can fit there. And overall, really, really great game. Found the cheapest price around 12 euros. This one may be a bit more, but the first series, that's pretty clever. Well, around 12 euros, so very cheap, a lot of replayability, so a great starter pick. So okay. I'll start with this one. I think I'm winning right now, but uh, it is a competition, right? It always is it's with just, us. Course. Anyway, yeah. let's move on to my next pick. It's going to be just one. We've talked about this not just one time on this channel. This is a party game, co-op party game for three to seven people where one player tries to guess the word and all the other players give him clues by writing them down on their board. But the trick is if somebody else writes the same clue as somebody else, then they erase those clues. And that's essentially, it feels like they're thinking, so how is my collection no limits? Because it also feels kind of budget. We'll get there. We'll get there. Hold on to your seats. So this one, it qualifies for a co-op game, qualifies for a lot of people. I mean, yeah. it plays up to seven, is 534 sure. And theoretically, since you stretch your pockets that big, <laughs> you could stretch them a little bit farther and put this in your pocket. No, yes, no, yes. Nah. From my collection, there's only one game that I don't have with me right now. And it's, no thanks. No thanks. Yeah. More thanks. That's the name of the game. It's super cheap. I think it was around 10 euros as well or yeah. something. Uh, but the idea is very, very simple. You have money chips and each round a card is put in the middle of the table and there's a number on it. For example, 10. And those are actually minus points. If you will get that card with 10, you will get minus, well, 10 points. But you can see, no thanks and uh, put money on top of that card and now you can give that card to the next player and then the next player can put his money on top of it and uh, so on and on and on until somebody. somebody decides to take it and why would you take it if you run out of chips that's one thing but the other thing is that each chip is also uh, like a victory point yeah so with each chip that card kind of becomes more and more inviting also, if you get numbers in one row, like one after the other, yeah. only the lower one counts as minus points. Not only you're playing the game, but you're playing the other players as well. 5.30 for sure, because we just told you all the rules, and yeah. it wasn't five minutes. Just as small as that one, I think. And you can play it up to seven, so with a lot of people as well. Just 22 euros, and you get two fantastic games already. Okay, you're gonna need really big pockets for this one. Planet Unknown is known as a polyomino game. 
Each player gets a planet board, each player gets a corporation board, and each turn you're placing down a polyomino that gives you resources. One player is a starting player who turns this little big spinning thing called Lazy Susan and picks one tile and then everybody else picks the one that is in front of them and places it in their board and then adds resources. That's it. Next player spins, picks one, adds the board and so on and so forth. It plays one to six players. So this is my solo pick, but it also plays up to six players. Definitely not 530, but what it is is a resource manager game and it would blow like most of my budget right there. So the okay. crew is okay. my co-op game, which is a trick-taking game, a cooperative one, okay. very unique at that, where uh, we all get cards in our hands and we have to play them out like a trick-taking fashion. If I play a card with a blue background, you also have to play it that way, and whoever has the highest number has to take that pile. And we have tasks, who needs to pick up which numbers, which cards, which piles. It's quite quick, it's not 5.30 I would say, because it takes more than five minutes to explain. It's quite challenging, it's something that not all people will enjoy. For me, it's either like a hit or miss game, where all people who like challenges, you know, who wants a tough cooperative game, where you need to use a lot of logics and forward thinking, then this one is totally for you. But don't worry, I thought about those people who don't want to do those things as well, because I found a game that costs exactly the same amount of money okay. and fills the same cooperative role. I found it for 12 euros and 19 cents. It's really cheap. Harry Potter, yeah, similar. Welcome. It's a very simple game where, in this case, yes, you have uh, Harry Potter characters, but there are different versions as well. But in general, you have 12 cards on the table, and one of you is a person who knows which one of these 12 cards on the table is the right everybody needs to guess, but I can't communicate with you. I can't talk, I can't like point or do anything else. I'm like a ghost. If somebody has played Mysterium, mm -hmm. this might sound familiar, but it's much simpler than that. Because the only way I can do that is by playing one card to all of you, placing it down either vertically or horizontally. If I place it vertically, that means that my card has something similar with that card you need to guess on the table. Or if I uh, place it horizontally, then uh, it has something that's completely opposite of that card that you need to point out. And everybody else has to figure out which one is the right one at the end of the game. Leave only that card in the middle of the table. So these two, whichever you prefer, either more, you know, crunchy game or more fun uh, experience, I guess. And Here the next go. one is going to be Feed the Kraken. Do you think we have talked enough about Feed we the Kraken on this channel? We have talked a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Review. Like we made a whole video, how we make videos about Feed the Kraken. Yeah, then we ranked it as one Best of Best uh, of games of all time for you. Anyway, here's some more. Feed the Kraken is a hidden role game where each player plays a person on a ship. You're either a pirate, you're either a crew ma member, or you're the cultist leader. Or the cultist. And each of you want to steer the ship into a different direction. So the captain chooses lieutenant and navigator, then everybody either agrees with that or votes with their guns to cancel that, then we change the captain and do that all over again. Once we're settled, lieutenant and navigator is gonna get two cards, which give you the direction the ship's gonna go. It plays up to yeah, 10 people, which is crazy. That's my thematic game. That's my thematic, that's my, what? You don't feel like it's thematic? I'll go with resources. I don't have resources here, so no, I have don't. to... <laughs> Please. You've picked this game in every time we have to pick a game somewhere. No. So, yeah, Cannon of Monsters, because it's a very cool set collecting game, as well as drafting game. So you basically are collecting monsters and going to different places to collect them. As they are monsters, you also have to fight against the dangers that they bring on you collect them in your carnival. There's a lot of unique mechanisms and it's simple, I would say, yet there is a lot of like challenges in there. So it's a great starter, I think, game that not a lot of people have appreciated so far. And it's, it's comparably pretty cheap. I, I found it for 26 euros. So quite Ridiculously cheap. cheap. Drafting is something that I think a lot of people, especially starting this hobby, will enjoy. What True. it means is you will have a bunch of cards, you pick one and give the rest of them to the next player. Splendor is a resource collection, set collection, buying? Yes. So you collect poke chips that are gems. You exchange those gems for cards that either give points or don't give points. Why would you buy cards that don't give points? Those cards count as gems themselves, so it's cheaper to buy the big ones that give a lot of points. And that your choice is simple. You either collect gems, 
you either buy a card or you reserve a card and when you do that you get like a joker gem that is um, a while definitely fits 530 plays well with two it has resources so it's a nice it's easy to pick up easy to play easy to teach most people like it 99% I've played with it. so definitely check it out watergate is a two-player one versus one game that's really quick the rules not five not five no, minutes no, but no. it's not difficult at all as no, well it's, not. It's, it's like 10 it's 10, like 10 minutes so it's not bad at all and there's a lot of theme here because it's about the Watergate scandal where President Nixon did some bad stuff. Allegedly. At, at the beginning of the game, allegedly. And then we'll see how it how, goes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And there are some good guys, journalists, that are trying to kind of put him in his place. At your turns, you play these event cards that have these major effects and move evidence to one yeah. or the other direction, gets initiative and other things. Yeah. Or you can play that card for the action points. Aggressive, fun game for two. It's the most expensive game here. <laughs> this is ridiculous. And that's the my finisher of your wow. starter set. If you sh could guess how much all of this costs. How much well, you mentioned. So this was like 26. So that was like, what, 12? Check 40. out how good Yanis is with math. So this is the most expensive. So I'd say 95. I bought all of this with 87 euros. For 87 euros, you can have your own personal board game started collection with brilliant games with all sorts of situations it's a very good uh, good uh, yeah yeah it's a good set right yeah I mean 87 dollars and you get like five games so let us know what would be in your starter collection yeah if, w would you consider buying any of these if you don't and have which these one? let us know one? Yeah, are you the budget guy or... Uh, also you know? comment how sad you are that Giannis lost this challenge because clearly this is a superior board game star. Your finger is pointing in weird directions. No, no, it's, it's you. It's no, you. no, it's please. You. Every single game here beats that one.